the data center market uh, in itself is is very dynamic, and we need to adapt to what the market is asking for. Um, especially as it relates to the cloud, what we're seeing right now is that you know most of the cloud players are looking for very large, uh, hyperscale type of installations, which means that you know typically uh, what's been done in the past is you've got smaller customers that are you know a couple hundred kW, where now you know some of the larger players, the Googles and the Microsofts and Rackspace, IBM, you know they're talking you know, tens of megawatts, you know, for uh, their applications. So you need to adapt to, you know, those types of uh, requirements, you know, as we uh, look at what we need to do going forward. The customer requirements change constantly. And the way that we uh, determine what's going on or what to expect in the future is that we have a lot of feedback from our customers through customer advisory boards and, and other uh, conversations. As a result, you know, what we used to be was a wholesale data center provider, uh, and now we've evolved into an organization that uh, does more than just wholesale uh, data center space. You know, with the purchase of Telex, uh, we've gotten ourselves into the co-location business. And what we're seeing also that customers is, have asked for is more interconnections uh, through uh, interconnection with our campuses, uh, interconnections to, you know, major gateways so that they can reach cloud providers. Um, and also, you know, managed services. So what they're looking for at the, in the end is a value proposition so that they can do essentially one-stop shopping. And that's what we've been trying to provide. What a customer is typically gonna look for is at the end of the day, cost. Um, if their application uh, only needs N, they only wanna pay for N. If their application needs 2N or other redundancy, you know, they'll pay for that. Uh, but to try and mix them in the same location is extremely difficult. So what we try to do is give them the option of, all right, we'll have a data center dedicated towards N uh, applications, another data center dedicated towards 2N or other redundancy type of applications. And, and that's it. And that way, then they're able to pay for what they're, what they're asking for. When you take a look at modular or prefabricated in a definition that digital looks at it, um, what we do in this campus, for example, is that all of our electrical and mechanical infrastructure uh, is on skids. Um, and the purpose for doing that was not cost, uh, but for speed to market and also quality. Um, by building the skids in a factory environment, you know, we're able to control uh, quality control um, and also we're able to inventory that equipment so that we can deploy it to our sites on an as needed basis or just in time. Co-location, probably you'll see them starting to use some of the concepts that you find with the internet giants. Uh, one that comes to mind uh, right away would be, you know, the design of servers. Um, where the internet giants, you know, design their servers just for their very specific applications and nothing more. Uh, you might find that in uh, some of the co-location world. You know, some of the other things that, you know, we've seen with the internet giants is operating at higher voltages. Um, that's becoming more commonplace now where, you know, what used to be uh, 208120 as the standard now has become 400, 230, for example. The evolution of the cloud is going to be the biggest thing that affects this market um, and being able to uh, accommodate the requirements that we're seeing now is the biggest challenge.